for every problem, challenge that is mentioned there, I'm going to come up with some suggested solutions. Students often send messages that are using the language that is not acceptable to each other. You know, and again, um, students tend to assume that as a lecturer who is on WhatsApp, you are going to be available to them 24-7. Like I said, set time aside so that you can attend to their problems, to their WhatsApp messages, and all of that. But it's a sense of relief to students, again, because they believe whenever I'm encountering a problem with this problem that I have to solve, academic problem that I have to solve, then my teacher is available 24-7. So it's a relief to them. And then next, um, teachers felt uncomfortable being at peer level with the students. Is that the same with you, colleagues? Yes. I, I talked to one of my colleagues and his colleague said, We are sitting in Kijimi. That is, you know what in Kijimi? I don't like this thing of sharing my number of students. One student called me and apparently he was drunk telling me how much he loves me. <laughs> so, those are the problems that you might anticipate if you decide to engage. But like Prof. Gandhi said, um, about breaking, breaking what? Where well, there's, there's a lady with pots, yes. If you are not ready to break a few pots, then you're not going to. Let's move on. Um, okay, the other problem that has been complained about, as far as the church is concerned, about WhatsApp is that students tend to ignore grammar rules. You know, they tend to use extremely shortened versions of sentences or words. They ignore vowels, for instance, to, when you say, I sent you a message, so it's going to be, I sent you, which is you, letter you, message is going to be as a, a message. One, English only, fair enough. You join my group, English only. You join my group, be active. You join my group, be willing to share with somebody you are sitting next to who might not be on WhatsApp. You join my group or you are part of my workshop, be willing to assist the person next to you who is not able to join our WhatsApp group. If you have joined and we had to move along, leave that person behind, make sure you drag them along. So those are the rules, basically. What the police said there, that you're supposed to set the rules and make them clear. All right, and even the kind of content and all of that. And again, avoid, this is really important for me, Whenever you have set a group and students have joined, there will be instances where someone's going to ask a question and then it will end up being a dialogue between two people. Make sure that that which somebody posts, the question they ask is the group, is, is the question that affects the whole group, not an individual. So let's get started. How do I set my group? I've created a WhatsApp group. Please join my WhatsApp group. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. I just want to say that it's not visible, whatever. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The text is accessible. It's the light. It's the light. Okay. Yeah. Now, the option that we have is to create a link. Can you see the link? Please try join the link. I can't see the Can you spell it out? Okay, it's HTTPS. HTTPS. Colon. CHTA. Project. CH. I'm CHAT. I'm sorry. CHAT. Chat. Dot. WhatsApp. Dot. Com. Slash. 4JH. V, V, F. You see, I'm doing this deliberately. I know you're not going to be able to catch up with me. <laughs> yes, it's what my students go through if I were to do this. No, it's fine. It's fine. That's what my students would say. Okay, here is another option then. So you have to create, you know about a QR code? No. You create a QR code. Through the QR code, what they do is they take their phones out and then they a phone is normally has an app that what we call a QR reader. So you create a QR code 
generate, you know, you generate a QR code and then you show it to them, it's gonna be like a picture, I'm gonna display it there. All you do is take your phone out and then scan and then we'll be able to join the group. Let's see. There we go. Scan that. You can use this QR code generator to generate your own QR code and then give this to students. So what you can do is you can print this out and then give to each student in your class. All they do is in front of them, they just scan it and then they join the group. One. Secondly, you can display like I did here, provided they have a QR code reader. Like many of you do not have that QR code reader and there's a chance that many of you didn't even know such a thing existed. And I can understand. But you ask your kids, it's gonna tell you, that, oh, that I know, QR code generator, QR code reader. Okay. As soon as we have joined, then we'll be ready to go. This is one of the things you are going to learn from this workshop. Sometimes you weak, okay, and sometimes you learn. <laughs> You win or you learn. So in this regard, we are winning. And some of us are learning. So shall we move on? <laughs> one last attempt. Next one minute, join. You can have WhatsApp on your, your desktop. And then this is how you add students. Through, this is the link I gave you. This is the link I do, from which I created the QR code. And then you can send the link via the WhatsApp group itself. You can send the link via SMS. You can send the link via email to students to join you. And then, again, you can copy the link. You can copy the link. You can copy the link to your... Um, to your when you copy something, what does, where is it kept? Yeah, yeah to, to your keyboard. You copy the link and then you paste somewhere. And then lastly, you can revoke the link. This is what happens. When a student joins your group, then they misbehave in the group, you kick them out. And then they use a different number to join. You can revoke the link so that a new link is created. Let me say that again. Okay, let me have your attention. WhatsApp comes with its own challenges. Among the challenges we talked about is students talking badly to each other, students not following the rules and all of that. And we know students can join using your link. You can send the link to a student to join and after they have joined, they misbehave. Now you want to keep them out of the group, you can keep them out of the group. But they can use a different number to rejoin the group. So what do you do in that regard? Since they have that link, you can revoke the link. When you revoke the link, you get a new link. So whatever link they have is not going to be active anymore. All right. Through WhatsApp, this is what I would do, colleagues. I would refer you to this website. Then what I would do would be take this. You can do this with WhatsApp. I have your attention. Then I would do this through WhatsApp. I'll take this link and share with every one of you using WhatsApp group. <laughs> and then through the group, you'll be able to click on this link and you receive an interactive activity. And then I would expect you to interact with that activity. And when you are done, you take a screenshot of that activity and then share with us. So I'm gonna see those of you who managed to join, I'm going to share this link using WhatsApp which could be a link to your website or an important website that you, are, you use for your class. I'll share this link to those of you who managed to join and then they are going to attempt the quiz for a minute and then share their screenshot. Why is it important that I mean, one of the ways through which you can share information is through taking pictures, okay? Okay, what happens is some students will say they don't have enough data like it was the case with you. In that regard, you have, in that regard, you ask students to make screenshots of the activity, interactive as it is, but for them it should be static. 
it wouldn't be an interactive picture, but it would be a static picture. And then they would share with their colleagues using Bluetooth or share it. Okay, so let me see those of you who managed to join if they will be able to access this link using WhatsApp. This person has joined to the same group. Yes. This person says this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven people managed to join the group. So that's quite a good number considering that you're doing this for the first time. And we have an hour within which I'm supposed to do this workshop. But it's good. Now I'm going to share again. Share, share the link I sent earlier. Okay, colleagues, we're running out of time. So, this is one way in which one can engage WhatsApp. How you do this? Some of us still use um, um, uh, exercise um, activity books. Say, all right. So you find that a student is working on their own at home, and they do not get the correct answer for a certain certain exercise or activity that they are doing at home. So that student can take a picture. Do I have your attention? That student can take a picture of that which they are working on, and they can show you all the steps that they followed. If it was a math problem that they followed so far, but they can't get to the correct answer, and they can take a picture and share with the rest of the group and share with the rest of the group to check if their answer is correct. That's one other way in which one can engage um, can engage WhatsApp in class and outside classroom. One other way colleagues, one can use WhatsApp is through voice notes. Now I'm going to ask you to make a voice note. Just a short voice note in which you comment one about the activity Two, about what is happening right now that I think this WhatsApp thing when you're setting it up is taking too long or oh, not really clear, not really clear but we, we make a, a voice note you know, just comment about what is taking place right now and send it through the group alright, so right now my colleagues this one is playing <laughs> And there we go. So this is one other way of communicating with your students. For instance, I've used voice notes for students to give them summaries of text they read. I ask them to read any text, any text, and then they give me a short summary of the text. They'll start by saying, on such and such a date, I read the text by so and so. It's very interesting because, and then they tell me about the text, and then send a voice note to me or to the group. So that's one other way of engaging um, uh, WhatsApp in class. All right, the other step would be to make a video, but I'm not gonna ask your colleagues to make videos and then share those and all of We're struggling already. So we're running out of time, let's move on. We can make videos. <laughs> later, later, always later. Lastly, colleagues, lastly, you can share a link via WhatsApp, and that link will lead students to an activity during class or after class. Let's take a look at this one. This one is an interactive video quiz. Some of us like using videos in class, but you just send a video to students and then you hope they are going to watch the video. But what evidence do we have that the students actually watch the video and could follow what was presented before? Technology is advancing day in and day out. So you better make sure that you are, you, 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 you are abreast of changes in technology. What I've, I've used WhatsApp for in my class is that I've given a chance to use for students to make voice notes in, and I've given them a chance to create videos in which they were introducing themselves. For instance, in another activity, I asked them to tell us how we could improve our use of technology in class. They video recorded themselves and sent that through to me. And they did online quizzes and well. I even give them um, access to past question papers through WhatsApp. All right. And then, lastly, colleagues, by show of hands, how many of you, okay, are on WhatsApp? Keep your hand up. Keep it up. On WhatsApp. <laughs> your hand up if you're on WhatsApp, Twitter, and Facebook. Those three: Twitter, WhatsApp, Facebook. No, if, if, if you are not in one of them, drop your hand. 
Okay, how many of you are on Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, and Instagram? Keep your hand up. Okay, okay. Instagram, you have your videos on, 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 on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> on technology and education, you've got to follow one that is somebody's Twitter account, like Professor Ngami's Twitter account, you follow that. And you watch them on YouTube and you should be able to comment on that which they say there. So for you to, to be able to comment, you've got to be, um, you, have, you have to have an account like that. And then again, you have to be on Facebook because some of these groups on how to engage technology in class are on Facebook and many other means of keeping abreast with technology. With those few words, colleagues, let me pause here for us to engage, to ask if you have any questions. I saw that when you uh, wanted your students to post to watch some videos, you wanted them to enter into their name and spelling. Uh, does that give you uh, a chance to check who has been watching or not? Okay. Her question was, I sent via WhatsApp, there's a part where they're required to indicate who they are, their last name and their name. Mm -hmm. You know what you get after the student or whoever watched the video, you get, um, I would say, you get evidence to that effect in the form of a score. Which questions they answered, which answers they, they got right, which answers they got incorrect. So, so that you can follow through on that, you gotta know who the person is. But you can make it anonymous if you want to. So I wanted that one so that it, so it identifies the participant. Thanks for the question. Yes, ma'am. So what I wanted to know was, how do you then create those pieces? You know, you shared the link with us, but how do I create? Because I know how to share, but I don't know what, how to create something to share. Okay, all right, colleagues, when it comes to technology, there's a lot that one can do, that one can use to create quizzes. And most of the stuff that I use is free, freely available on the internet. To create those quizzes, I used a very old software, it's a freeware now, it's called Hot Potatoes. So you can create interactive hot potatoes. You can create interactive quizzes like those, and you can embed videos, embed anything there, and you can after creating that video, that, that interactive quiz, you can embed it onto your website. So you can use Hot Potatoes to create interactive quizzes, that's free. You can use um, Google, Google. Um, yeah, you can use Google Forms. After you've created your quizzes on Google Forms, you can use Flubaru to auto to auto grade those. Or you can use Google Read. Okay. Okay. What I'm trying to show you is there's a lot one can use to create quizzes. You create your quizzes using um Hot potatoes. Hot potatoes. Okay, let's start with hot potatoes. Hot potatoes, you have to download that software. Okay. Upload, is it, install it to your computer, and then you create your quizzes. Okay. That's number one. And remember, that which you can create using a software can be downloadable into a printed format. Like you can download those to, to Word, and then you, 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 you administer those as an on paper test in class. Okay. Number one. Okay. Now that you say the students have an option to, to remain anonymous, how do you control, I'm not just about your personal experience, how do you control students' ambitions in this process? Students' ambitions? Ambitions, you know students may take up sometimes opportunities. So you just use this uh, WhatsApp communication for other things, maybe sending some information to your next you, you have various options. Option number one, you keep the student out of the group. I'll show you how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Okay, uh, I'll have to pick somebody out of the group. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I knew you. <laughs> um, you go to group information, and then on the group information, you will see who the participants are, right? These are our participants, and this one is busy, whereas I'm busy. Then, <laughs> then you just click remove from the group, and then you confirm that. Then you confirm the group. One of the activities I created using Google Forms. So you attempt that, it's on referencing. 
So you just tell me um, whenever you feel you've got that oral evidence, how to cite that on the reference list and all of that. Then it's not going to tell you if you are correct or incorrect until you have submitted. Noted. And as soon as we have submitted, you check your email. You'll get your score there. All right. That one I used Google Forms and Flubago. Is it possible for one to assign somebody the task of being an administrator of the group? Yes, it is possible. You are the creator of the group and then you can assign your tutors to be admins. And you can activate or deactivate the functionalities that allow any general body member in the group to post or from posting, you bar them from posting. And then you say to the system, only creators of the group and admins may post. Now, no other person may talk. Okay. It's possible to do that. So, that would be one other way of limiting students. But that does not encourage interactivity. So, it's one dimensional, one directional. I mean, so it's only you sending a message to the students. Whenever they have a question, they can't. All right, but it's possible. You can create admins and then assign admins some duties. And you can prevent others from posting to the group. It's possible. All right. Any other questions, colleagues? Any other questions? Okay, as I was walking around, I had a conversation with colleagues sitting at the back. He is saying, they, they were saying, they already use WhatsApp. But I found it quite interesting how they say they use it. All they do is they, 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 they give one student, who is the class rep, and their number, and that student creates the group. Whenever they want to communicate with students, they send a message to the class rep who in return sends to the group. You can do that, but I asked them why. They said, ah, you know, students, I don't believe. But ultimately, it boiled down to saying they didn't like that students get their number. Colleagues, from, that, from my experience, Students don't just call. Students don't just private SMS. You. No, they don't do that. My experience, they haven't done that. Except that of the colleague who was called by a student who was drunk and all of that. But in my experience, it has not happened. Okay, so trust me, it might not. Okay, no, it will not happen to you. Okay, secondly, stay in the rules clearly. Or above all, just have a just have a separate number for them. Okay, noted. One other thing you can do with WhatsApp, do I have your attention? One other thing you can do on WhatsApp is you can have a number assigned to your WhatsApp messages. For instance, my number. This phone has two SIM cards. Whenever you call me on the one that is I'm on WhatsApp in that group, it rings here. I pick the call up here. But whenever I want to be on WhatsApp, that number is active, which is still the same number here. For calls, it's here. For WhatsApp, it's there. So you can do the same. <laughs> Want me to say that again? It is possible to assign a number to your WhatsApp instead of the number that you are using. It is possible, yes. So that way, a student will have a different number than the one that you use with your family. But why then? Why then go through all the troubles? Avoiding that students have your number? But it doesn't happen to me. Okay, maybe we have different numbers. Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, was, I, was, I was noted, I was trying to crack it joke and it didn't last so you didn't uh, To be honest, this phone takes two SIM cards. Yeah. Oh. One SIM card is uh, the number colleagues have, and another SIM card is my class number, WhatsApp. Yes, so I have this number and WhatsApp on my, on my desktop and my, my, my tablet, the tablet I got from CLT. From TLTC. Okay, your hand was up. I'm sorry to interrupt. So there's a question there, which means if you've, if you've got WhatsApp on your laptop, mm -hmm. you can't have the WhatsApp on the phone. Okay. Yes, you can. 
Okay, let me, how much time do we have? Okay, great. Okay, you see, this is the tab that I'm talking about. If I send a message here from this tablet, it's going to display on that screen as though I send it from my desktop. So these two are synchronized. So depending on which one is connected to the internet, I can send a message from my, 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 my tablet and then we find that my desktop is not connected to the internet. So it's gonna take a while before it displays on my desktop. I sent to the class rep. But whenever a student wants my number, the class rep would ask me first and then send it to them. But free as I am with them, they, they, they do not overstep their boundaries. I'm not saying it wouldn't happen, but I think there's that, you know, yeah, even if, yeah, there's that respect. So I think sometimes we, we, we fear things that probably wouldn't, because remember, students will fear you as a lecturer as well, no matter how free you are. So there's going to be a limit, you know, um, of, of, of things that they can say to you. Um, yeah. But maybe, if this is, I, I, I'm finding this very useful. Can you then advocate for TLDC to get us a, a tablet? <laughs> <laughs> what I can say is I really advocate and I submit to TLDC to encourage us to have devices through which we can access WhatsApp. Be it in the form of encouraging us to write articles, publish, then get incentivized somehow, <laughs> then we can take that money to purchase. But okay, I don't know if you can say anything about that. Hello. All right. No, I was just saying you need to make a compelling case. Yeah. And we can talk. Okay. <laughs> it seems you are using technology more than most of us are using it. And understanding, I'm not sure where um, the institution of from MHT, yes. How good is your internet connection, Wi-Fi, whatnot? Don't you get troubles here and there? Because sometimes you find that you want to load something on Blackboard. You're trying to use technology, but you want to load it on Blackboard, but it's impossible because Wi-Fi connection is down or Blackboard link is down. How do you maneuver through all those challenges? We do have Wi-Fi, though not so good, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, to get stuff done, you can always find a way around. One of those that we talked about here is one, you send to those who can access that which you want to share, and then those who receive it can share it via Bluetooth, via sharing, or via SMS with, with their colleagues. That's number one. Number two, in the event that there's no internet, no connection whatsoever, including for you as a lecturer. Yeah. Right? I use, right now, this presentation is done through my, 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 my Wi-Fi hotspot. So I make sure I have Wi-Fi hotspot so that I can be able to share the content I want to. But you can always follow through. You try something during the, like, during the lecture, it does not work. Then you have to come up with plan B like I did. You know, I attempted to get this presentation as interesting as I planned, but it looked like I was, I was only learning. <laughs> from the but then I had to come up with plan B. Then you can follow through. After the class, you just tell the students that you see the presentation I made today didn't go as planned. Then I'm going to send you the slides later on. And follow through on your work. That's what I did. I, I, I fully get you. A, a follow-up. Not all of them are interested in being taught using technology. Yes. Mm -hmm. So how do you ensure that you entice them to wanting to learn um, through technology? Because sometimes you want to put up a quiz on Blackboard, they tell you we don't want that. Right. We want to get a script and write it and be I'm done. In that regard, fortunately there was about three or four of us who lectured the same course. Then I checked if the student indeed liked my class. They had an option to go to another lecture. Two, you know, with quizzes that you create using Google Forms, those can be printed out. You can allow the student to submit on paper. Two, with quizzes that are interactive on, 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 on hot potatoes, you can print those out and give to the student, but the student is going to miss out on one aspect. 
interactivity. You saw, you attempted that quiz and it will tell you there and then whether you're correct or incorrect. So for them, their feedback will be delayed. So in a way, they are losing. And remember, this is what somebody said. You are not teaching a subject, you are teaching people. So treat them as people. If they don't like it, don't do it. They don't like it, it doesn't work for that particular student, don't do it. But there are many students where they are. And many, many of them are on social networks. They use the cheapest of them all, the most accessible of them all, the most convenient of them all, which is WhatsApp. Kando? Are you doing this on your own or there's uh, support that you get or that you think you may need from uh, TLTC? Like, are you doing this uh, just on your own or you have support from TLTC? Support will never feel enough. Mm -hmm. yes. For instance, I what did I win? What's that thing? Um, uh, this is award, you know, conducted by the TLDC. Then I got, I got the, that award. Then I received that tablet. So that's support one, you know. And then secondly, there's Mr. Nyon, who is always there to help me whenever I encounter a problem. He is always there. But even that, you feel it's not enough. For instance, in my class, they treated it, and I believe they still do, they treat it as a semester module. So it means in June, all that which I posted on record gets deleted. Yeah. My students, they cannot access it, whereas they are a year course. So inconveniences like those, you know, it takes you a year or two to learn that all oh, something is not working out here. And then you embark on your own ways of countering, of, 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 um, of overcoming those problems. Yes, support is there, but you'll always feel it's not enough. Like I said, internet connection on my campus is, is okay, but you feel it's not enough. Last, last one, okay. okay. How much time do we have? So good? Yeah. You find out in your class, it's working very well with your students. But when they go to another point, you get back to whiteboard, blackboard and check white chalk. For instance, students would say, Mr. So and so, Dr. Professor So and so said, let's meet at lab so and so for class A, B, C. So, use, using my platform, okay, or our platform, number one. Number two, some lecturers would share notes using students. Ah, send this through Kijima's black, through Kijima's WhatsApp. And then they, so, so somehow they get encouraged. They see the benefit, even though they don't want to break a few points. Okay. All right, so to encourage you colleagues, number one, the way you were taught 10 or 20 years ago, so the way your teachers taught you 10 or 20 years ago might be somehow irrelevant, for the playing field has changed now. And if you'd like to teach the way you were taught, then please, let's be considerate here. You deserve the same salary of the teachers who taught you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> we would like to, to thank you for the 